Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And we have a lot to talk about. Listen, it's been a while since I've made a video on Quant, but uh, I figured, you know, it's overdue. I think that's time. I think that's time. And, um, you know, there's a lot of information out there when it comes to what's happening around our financial system. I think at this point, it's kind of just uh, ridiculous to come to the conclusion that we're not seeing a massive change happening. And I think that as long as you have your eyes open, you can clearly see it. Things are ready. The entire financial system as we know it is on the brink of implosion. It's only a matter of time. We're continuing to print ourselves into oblivion and fiat currencies as we know it are failing. So we look at what's happening. We look at what's going to come next. And, you know, we are about to see a, a full reset of our, of our financial system. And now it could happen in a year. It could happen in two years. It does not matter. All we know is that we are positioned and we will reap the rewards of being positioned and being that that one percent or even less than a percent that already are positioned. Now, with that, let's go back to 2022. Cebos with quant now there's a few companies out there in this space like ripple that have held conferences in the past or have been at major conferences in the past where you've had major banks okay and it's ultimately like a banking conference that's what they are and i'm talking about ripple swell cbos is very similar to it okay and in this pdf file by quant we have digital assets ready for center stage quant guide to the world's premier financial services event now remember that this was right around um you know this is 2022 so this is the bear market it's right around where like pretty much everyone was out of this space there was ba barely anyone even paying attention and um you know it's significant to mention because this was a huge event and um we have a full breakdown of quant what quant is here we have Welcome to CBOS 2022. You can see all the speakers. You can see the sessions, 8,000 plus delegates, eight stages. This was October 10th through the 13th, like I said, right before the implosion of uh, FTX. And we have CBOS is where global banks, market infrastructures, large corporates, governments, regulators, and investment firms, as well as the fintechs that serve them and the journalists and analysts who cover them convene in the name of, as Swift used to say, advancing critical dialogue and this year, as decentralized finance makes tangible inroads into the world of traditional finance, that dialogue feels more critical than ever. So very interesting, right? Like all these big players here, it doesn't really sound like a crypto conference, does it? No, these are giants around the financial space. And what we saw here was the big themes. DLT, interoperability, institutional digital assets, which is around tokenization, tokenized money itself, and then CBDCs. Now. In this full breakdown, what we get a little bit of a glimpse at is how this whole system will work. Specifically, APIs. APIs are the key around all of this. It's how everything will work. APIs are basically like the secret sauce, if you will call them. Um, and what this is going to allow is pretty much anything to be created, anything to be connected, you name it. And even down here we have, but some of us are actively working on these challenges. Overledger's tokenized API creates digital assets designed for interoperability that can transact across different DLTs. This is huge. This is huge. Like an email sent between Gmail and Outlook, an interoperable NFT could move from one big tech metaverse to another. Likewise, an interoperable stablecoin could be used for payments across platforms between uh, disparate geographies. Now, why is this very important? Why, you know, why is APIs a big focus point? Is it just like a big thing within, you know, crypto? Well, APIs have always been a big deal. In fact, outside of crypto, like APIs are hugely adopted. But now we're starting to see APIs being brought up in discussions heavily. Over here, big shout out to Greg Lunt X. And by the way, big shout out to his um, Overlegends group. If you guys did want to go check that out, it's overlegends.com. But 
you can't afford to not be a part of this discord you need to join the free discord down in the description below as well as in the comments below right now to get ahead of the rest of the market with 24 7 365 access to information around crypto including insights trades all coin gems you name it you need to be a part of this discord so what are you waiting for click the link down in the description below as well as in the comments below to join today new q and cpo martin hargreaves unveils the inner workings of the rln orchestration and programmability layers powered by overledger another exclusive clip from last week's private rln workshop in less than a minute hargreaves showcases four important platform features security the system uses financial industry api standards already found in open banking privacy the same end-to-end -end encryption as the bank for international settlements project rosalind another q and driven network functionality simplified api endpoints for all types of digital money wrap cbdc's or cbdc's or sorry wholesale cbdc's and retail cbdc's i'm so used to saying wrapped so i do apologize um tokenized deposits rtgs etc Flexibility, new workflows and applications can be added at any time, future proofing the technology to support innovation. The RLN is a new foundational infrastructure which will expand to different jurisdictions in the coming months and years, establishing powerful regulated networks of digital money. QT continues to play a huge role in its design and execution. And check this out. We use financial API standards for security, we come from open banking, and we also use the privacy model from Project Rosalind as well. So we have ISO messages that come into there as part of the api but they are end-to-end -end encrypted we have endpoints of all the different types of money so commercial bank money central bank money retail and wholesale shared ledger tokenized deposits and then for each of the api calls there's kind of a workflow engine where it will look at what kind of money did we come from where did we go to how do we settle this and it will route it appropriately the orchestration there is primarily a workflow engine and the rest of it is kind of abstracted so that we can add more in the future none of that needs to concern an rln api programmer consumer that's all abstracted down and converted on the way through so the rln api is basically consistent across all the forms of money we use finance so there you guys have it again you know on the screen you can see the full breakdown um, of the workflow orchestration including overledger you can see the state management which is the programmability layer and then you also have the rln api this is all through apis and remember this is the regulated liability network like these these are big pieces of the financial system essentially and what's happening around our financial system like this is how things would work you have third-party integrations and business applications at the top and it's all plug and play throughout the entire process now outside of this right just like he did say around project rosalind remember that that was all based on apis it tested how application programming interfaces apis could facilitate retail payments in cbdc's and support in the exploration of innovative cbdc use cases and this is what the core API layer actually looked like, where you have central bank ledger um, layer on the left. And then you have the smart contracts there, simulation of tokenized or token based ledger. Um, then you have the ledger API, which is the CBDC API, DLT API, and even the signing API. And you have the DLT connectors, which means that you can connect to pretty much any DLT out there. Um, and then you also have the core API layer, which is where you have like the FAPI, the TLS, orchestration, messaging, PKI, and that's the Rosalind sandbox. That's the CBDC API. Again, that's a plug and play, right? Because this entire thing, like replace CBDC API with anything. And that's how it can connect to Quants Overledger, which is a ledger API layer that can connect to, you know, a central bank ledger. Um, it can connect to pretty much anything. It doesn't matter. Like this is all, you know, plug and play with pretty much everything out there. And this was the four main objectives, functionality, interoperability, adoption, ecosystem. And it's all around API plug and play technology. And it's with public and private sector innovation. Now, outside of this, yes, going all the way back to October of 2020, cross-border payments innovating in a changing world. This is from the Bank of England. Remember, Juan just recently, you know, had this major, um, this major collaboration with the BIS and also the Bank of England. Um, this also mentions APIs. Specifically, we have. This is where the introduction of APIs and the greater harmonization of data through the important move to ISO 2022 can really make a difference. Specifically, the building blocks in this focus area go deeper than identifying standards. It extends to incorporating crucial mapping and translation tools that support widespread interoperability between systems. 
What systems are they talking about? Well, we have up here, for an example, Swift estimates that inquiry management is costing banks 25 to 35 times more than payment processing itself, and that efforts to automate cross-border payments um, processing have had very limited results. How do they automate processing around cross-border payments? Oh yeah, that's right, tapping into AI with blockchain. And that's what, where we get this, right? And we even have these building blocks have the potential to improve compliance processes and address data handling issues within legacy technology platforms and maximize the positive impact of the technical, operational, and regulatory process changes advanced under the other focus areas. And this is where we start to see the evolving landscape of payments. We even have down here, the renewed service will also provide a new API layer that can support automated data transfer between systems. And uh, the next uh, mention of API down here is building block 15 calls for harmonized API data protocols and the bank will support this objective in its development of an API layer. Let's go back over here to this breakdown where you have that central bank uh, ledger layer. That's basically a bank layer. That is where anything can plug and play into this. So as we really look at this, this is going back to 2020. They were already planning this back then. And then guess what? The Bank of England and the BIS work together on this initiative with who? Oh yeah, that's right, Quant. Over here we have Open Banking API, the future of banking just got more efficient. This is June 19th, 2023, and this is all through Open Banking API. This can plug and play. Open Banking APIs foster innovation and competition in the financial sector. Third-party access to financial institution data enables the development of new products and services, promotes healthy competition among providers, and enables the development of more efficient and innovative services. How can, what, what type of use cases can be built through this? Well, it can be pretty much anything. Guys, there's anything out there. Here's credit, kudos, right? Here's Tink. Here's uh, Railzer, here's Pla uh, Plaid, everyone knows about Plaid. Um, here's TrueLayer as well. I mean, like these are, these are major things that are changing the game, but these are just companies. These are things that people pretty much know about. What about Ripple, right? What about, you know, the API plug and play technology that Ripple has? What about the API through Hedera? What about the API? Th like, that's where I'm looking at, right? Like, I'm looking at how all these players can connect with Overledger because when you are investing into Quant, right, you're essentially investing into the life cycle of DLT as well. You're betting on DLT being a, a big success within finance and banking because all of those big players, they're not going to have success unless they're interoperable. And we already know that Quant's in it deep with these big elites and these central banks already. August 28th, 2023, just recently, bringing public finance into the digital era. This is from the IMF, like I've said, um, in our recent research at ODI's uh, Digital Public Finance Hub, we are critical of the prevailing paradigm for how we think about digital transformation within public financial management, PFM. And uh, this is all, guess what? This is all through APIs. We have this paradigm is characterized by a solution driven approach, a closed and siloed technolo technology architecture and an unsuitable and outdated funding and delivery model. In short, we feel it fails to live up to the promise of a digital revolution in public finance and is not keeping pace with wider developments in digital government. And what are they looking at? Well, they're looking at APIs. Even if we scroll back down here, right? So um, I'm trying to scroll down and find it. Let me just, uh, oh, here we go. So APIs. So this means shifting to a much more open architecture based on standardized open APIs. New models for thinking about the role of government in the digital era emphasize a reorganization of government around data platforms and services. And here you guys have what that looks like. APIs are the key around all of this. And if we go over here as well, September 29th, 2021, enabling open finance through APIs, report on payment initiation. This is from the BIS. Even BlackRock with Aladdin has their API studio where it pretty much enables you to build anything. Aladdin through BlackRock, BlackRock itself will be plug and played through an API as well. This could very well be tapped into Overledger to tap into DLT. Like all of this can be plug and played. JP Morgan also offers APIs um, around their catalog of APIs. Research and marketplace, stuff like that, like they offer pretty much everything. And we even have down here that JP Morgan de uh, developer expands to third-party APIs as well. 
power your business with chase apis like apis it, everything everything will work through apis so anything that is an api it could very well plug in to this through any like everything that you think of network wise or any use case out there apis are the key and it will all plug and play with this and it will all connect the dlt world to the traditional world and there's already substantial information out there around how connected quant is with all these big banks like this is just the bank of england but there's so many other major players tied to quant as well it's only a matter of time until people realize just how big quant is in the world of finance with that being said like guys enjoyed this video if you guys did, definitely leave a like subscribe to notifications on because more free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord in the description below and with that being said guys it's been nick thanks for watching peace out